Hey, hey, everybody! Margo Fump here, uh, doing a speed run for Nancy Drew, Secret of the Old Clock. I, I have a good feeling about this speed run. I think I can beat this game in under an hour, if that is the time I am going for. Let's see, let's see if I can do it. Let's see if I can do it. So, uh, part of the reason I think I can do it is because of this fancy cheat here. So, let me just show off the cheat real quick. So this card puzzle is really, really difficult, this, this, this difficult card puzzle. So what I did here is I just played through the game, uh, you know, got to the card puzzle part of the game, and just replayed it over and over and over until I got the correct answers. Now I'm going to restart, and the answers should be the exact same. So that way I won't have to do any guessing on the card puzzle. I'll just be able to uh, play the game, go straight through the card puzzle with one round instead of taking five minutes on the card puzzle. So I think because of that cheat, I can beat the game in under an hour. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can do it. Okay, so it's going to begin when I hit Junior Detective. Go! Another uh, cheat I just found out was um, uh, I can click in the upper left-hand corner of this scene at one point. Not, not here. Where's my, where's my cursor? Here it is, here it is. There. Okay, so you'll notice I clicked in the upper left-hand corner at that point, skipping a little bit of the opening cutscene, thereby saving some more time. That's another skip I found, which saves time. Woohoo! Alrighty. Alright, so let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. Okay, so first things first, we run in and we talk to Jane. So, uh, yesterday, I, I, I did the speedrun twice, uh, you know, I, I, I did a speedrun twice of this game, I didn't beat an hour, uh, the first one was an hour and eight minutes, the other one was an hour and one minute, and, uh, yeah, no, I, I had a lot of fun doing the speedrun, but apparently it was not popular with people, uh, the video got like 900 views, zero likes and two dislikes and so it, it made me it made me very sad so that's part of the reason why i'm trying again it's like well the the last time i tried to speed run it was not popular so this time i'm gonna beat the game in under an hour and it's gonna be extra popular right right there is no way to skip the dialogue in this game in order to save time that is very very sad i wish i could uh you know skip through some of this dialogue so, um, at the start of the game, you have to do a lot of dialogue. Uh, <laughs> the, first, the first 20 minutes of this game are basically just talking to characters. So, uh, I mean, this conversation with Jane, as you saw, it automatically happens whenever you go to the Lilac Inn. Uh, you get thrown into that conversation. You can't go anywhere else at this point in the game. Uh, that is uh, Richard Topham. You can't go to Richard Topham until his uh, until we have the fire, in, in, until there's been the fire. And we can't go to Jim Archer until we talk to Emily about it. So uh, the way I figured out uh, to get through this conversation, basically you just uh, you go through... I just went through all these conversations over and over and over and over again and, and figured out the fastest way through the various conversations. So sometimes uh, it, it's fast if you uh, avoid uh, conversations. Like, if you pick my dad here, she'll say, Helen says he's a lawyer. And Nancy will start to talk, and then, and then Emily goes, shh. So obviously it's faster just to pick the second option there because you, you skip the, the line about um, Mr. Giroux being a lawyer. That's, that's sort of how it works, you know. We, we try to avoid any ancillary conversations, conversations that aren't necessary. That's, that's how you speed through conversations. Another way to speed through conversations is to uh, pick the shorter option. That is, uh, as you saw there, uh, we have two different options Nancy has. Uh, the first option is two sentences long, the second option is one sentence long. So it's faster to pick the second option. Uh, uh, there are several times like that where, uh, you know, y you want to pick the shorter uh, conversation option because Emily's going to say the same thing no matter which option you pick. That happens an awful lot in this game where you, you can pick multiple options, 
but uh, really the characters will say the exact same things no matter which options you pick. Uh, the only the only conversation in this game that is really different is uh, Topham's conversation. Uh, the first conversation with Richard Topham. He has about four or five different things he can say, as opposed to just having two or three. Does he know what caused the explosion? It looked to him like one of the burners on the stove had been left on. The flame either went out or was never lit. But so you'll notice with the mouse, uh, whenever somebody finishes talking, the mouse goes straight to the middle of the uh, dialogue screen. I don't know why that's the case. Why that's the case? With this conversation here, um, we're gonna momentarily get the menu button at the bottom when the text box disappears, and you can click on the the menu button there, stop and save your game. Uh, there's no point, but you can do it. Okay, so I'm I, 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 I'm doing this actually as a live stream. People on the internet are uh, are, are uh, you know watching this. Um, I have not watched the other speed run for this game actually. But yeah, see there we we get like a, a minute or a brief second while Emily says oh no, and you can move the mouse around. You can't interact with anything, but. My mother's jewelry. It, it, it's just a weird thing. Okay, so Emily conversation. I pick option number two. So here's a, an interesting thing. This point of the game. So you'll notice all these conversation options, you only have two choices to pick from. Only two choices to pick from. Here, we're going to get three choices to pick from. This is actually the only time in the game where we get, get um, three things. Uh, this is... I'm sorry, wait a minute. Emily has to tell us about Josiah Crowley first. <laughs> So what I'm going to na next is uh, basically we have to do all these conversations here at the start of the game, as I said, to unlock all the other areas. And here's the conversation with three options. All the other ones we've seen so far only have two. So this this is interesting here that there's a third one. I don't know why there's a third one for this. Okay, so as I was saying, we're basically doing this stuff at the start of the game because it unlocks the other stuff in the game. I can talk to Richard Toplin now. I can talk to uh, Jim Archer after I, I talk about the insurance here, and that's exactly what I'll be doing with uh, Emily in just a moment. So that's the way I routed this, was uh, I figured it was... Uh, yeah, well, obviously you have to go through all the start of game conversations, but I figured I would do all the stuff in, you know, here at the Lilac Inn and Richard Topham's house before going on to... Uh, before going into town. And that's because, uh, uh, two reasons. Uh, we got three things to do in town right now, and uh, two of them are sort of triggered by stuff at Richard Topham's area. So that's why I go to Richard Topham's area first. If that makes sense. So first I'm going to get the piece of paper. And there's that conversation. You have to have this conversation before you could go to Jim Archer. Otherwise Jim Archer doesn't appear. And here's the one thing. Okay, piece of paper. Oh, how did I miss it? Oh, ugh. Fun fact, I didn't realize this until speedrunning the game. You can actually call uh, Mr. Waddell before going into town and meeting him. Another fun fact, uh, there are three different places where the toy mouse can appear. I've only ever seen it show up here, though, so... I mean, three places, but really, you know, in reality, it's only been two places for me. Gotta wait for the mouse to appear before I can uh, talk to Richard. And now we have this conversation. So as I said, this conversation is kind of a, a tough one because there are a lot of variations. Uh, way more variations than any of the other conversations we've had so far. So, uh, like, there are... Hmm, four... Let me count. Yeah. There, there are... Um, 
well, six or seven different points where Nancy can uh, pick an option in, in the conversation, and that's what makes it difficult, because sometimes uh, sometimes you get seven, and sometimes you get six. And so that's 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 tough. You know, somebody wants the audio in the game turned up? I can try... I, I kind of turn it down. I don't want to dis disturb the other people in my house. That's all. When would be a good time for me to come back? I'll be blood, Miss Drew. I've just uh -huh. So, uh, I do like speed running. I'm not very good at this whole clicking. As you saw there, I tried to cl uh, click on that piece of paper. I missed. I tried again, and I missed. And so, um, I'm really good at planning speedrun routes, figuring out the fastest way through the game. But, um, actually, actually clicking super fast, maybe not the best. That's, that's definitely not my, uh, forte. So I, I'm totally fine with being the guy who just plans speedruns and not doesn't really do them. Okay. Gonna be quiet here for this puzzle. This puzzle is randomized. Every time you um, every time you look at the puzzle, it changes. Uh, same with the uh, matching puzzle in Danger on Deception Island. So uh, say you save your game and reload, it it doesn't make a difference. Um, gosh, I'm so bad at this. Okay. Yeah, so if you save your game and reload, um, that's not going to help you because it's totally going to change. Okay, double gears, butterflies, um, no, okay. Jeez, how am I that bad? Okay. Wow, single gear, single gear, cheese grater, okay. Hat, hat, bear, bear. Wait, what? Got it! Okay. That wasn't so bad, right? I, what this mirror is doing in I had to get the mirror at some point. Uh, basically, we need to get all four mirrors to uh, solve a puzzle later on. A puzzle inside the... Um... Yeah, it's the puzzle inside the carriage house. And what we have to do is a we absolutely have to open up this notebook so uh, we can ask what Gloria's middle name is. That's the only thing the game checks. The you know the game just assumes you play bard bows and uh, miniature golf. You don't have to do it. You can totally skip it, but it does check to make sure you know what Gloria's middle name is. So that's that's a time saver that I don't have to solve uh, those other puzzles. But I do have to check what Gloria's middle name is. So I'm just gonna run right over here, get that middle name, because I figured hey might as well do it here while I'm in. While 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 I'm while I'm here. Hi Nancy, what was your mother's middle name? Lois. Why? Oh. I could do this after I go back. I That's mean, after I come back from going into Don't town. But it, you know, it works here. Okay, run, 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 run as fast as you can. Looks like I need to get the bird. Start moving the pieces while Nancy is talking to save time. And uh, sorry if I'm ignoring all you people watching this, because I am running. Woo! Run, run, run. Do, 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 do. Okay, now I've got a little bit of time to see what people are saying. Hmm, that car I saw before is gone. Secret of Shadow Ranch. Yep. Secret of Shadow Ranch is a good game. I might want to speed run that again someday. Wait, what am I saying? I am horrible at all the puzzles of Secret of Shadow Ranch, but if you've got the puzzles memorized, uh, speedrunning it is pretty simple. Mrs. Sheldon? Yes? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm a friend But yeah, mini golf is difficult. Did you could totally skip yeah. the mini golf in this game. The game automatically assumes you did bard bouts, you, you did mini golf, and whatever the other thing was. It, you looked at the book in Emily's room. That's the third thing. The game only checks for the last item, item number four, Gloria's middle name. So that's that's a big time saver. So one of the reasons for uh, mini golf is uh, it, it's it's a money saver. Actually, you can get a toy from playing mini golf. Uh, you know, you get ten cents. You get a toy for uh, ten cents if you do it uh, via mini golf. It costs a. Uh, quarter if you get toys from the vending machine. So the way this route works is I deliver one telegram to get all of the money I need. So I, I need 
I need money for a toy. I need money for five toys. And I need money for both trips to uh, Mr. Waddell. So if I deliver exactly one telegram and get a dollar from from the hidden passageway, that should cover my expenses without having to uh, do mini golf. Another way you can make money in this game is through uh, fishing, but that takes a while. Fishing, uh, I guess I'll talk more about this with fishing, but um, I've never actually done fishing to the point where I've gotten a, a quarter. I've only gotten a, a, a nickel from uh, fishing, and the nickel is just enough to make one phone call. If I could figure out a way to get a, a quarter from Hello, fishing, it would be faster to go fishing than it would be through, uh, uh, through uh, delivering a telegram. In any case, doing a telegram is way faster than me playing mini golf and getting it. Jim Archer wanted you to appraise a key? It was very ornate. Had jewels all over it. Fake jewels, as it turned out. When I told him it was worthless, the cheapskate refused to pay me and told me... Okay, yeah, I need money to pay him for this thing, and I need money to pay him for something else. Which is... A dollar and fifty cents. Here you go. Good. Here's the key. Enjoy. Hello, I'm Somebody mentioned uh, the speed run uh, uh, competition. Uh, Hello, are you Nancy Drew? I think uh, one of the Nancy, I think the two Nancy Drew games that the speed run people have uh, covered are um, Nancy Drew: The Final Scene and Nancy Drew: uh, The Silent Spy. Uh, those are the ones, the speed runs I've seen people try to do for um, you know the awesome games done quick and um, the summer games done quick, the speedrun competition thing. So the people who run that, uh, the only Nancy Drew runs I've seen them tackle besides mine are the silent spy in the final scene. Okay, so Jim Archer, uh, these conversations are pretty simple. It's really simple. Uh, unfortunately, we're thrown into this conversation with Jim Archer at the start of the game. What we need to do is actually look at the clock so we can talk to him about it. So that's what I'm going to do here. Sorry for the interruption. How can I help you? I guess I'll be going. Give my best to Emily. Where did you get this clock? Okay, and now I'm going to talk to him about the clock. Keep in time the minute he walked out the door. Hello again. The key that you had Mr. Waddell appraised. Could that be the key to the clock that Josiah Crowley gave you? It might have been, I suppose. You know about that? Yes. In fact, I paid the appraisal fee. I, I did do a speed run for Nancy Drew. Stay tuned for danger. I did um, I think I did a glitch speed run. There's an item glitch you can do in that game. Um, but the game is programmed in such a way that it's it doesn't really want you to 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 glitch out with items. <laughs> like most games, if you try to break it, it won't work. It'll just be straight up broken, and then that'll be that'll just be sad times all around. Come on. Okay. Oh, I think I messed up on this. Okay, whatever. Let me just get the pieces in place, which I know how to get. Oh, jeez. Okay, this was a bad run. Okay. That game is being way too picky. Way too picky about that puzzle. Okay. Anyway, got it finished. Now for the trivet puzzle. Oh yeah, the, uh, there are two ways to trigger the trivet puzzle, this long trivet puzzle I'm doing right now. Number one is to flip to the last page of Josiah's notebook. Number two is to read the uh, typewriter ribbon in Jim Archer's area. It's faster to read the notebook because I have to look at the first page of the notebook anyway to trigger the, uh, you know, the, the lowest, the middle name. So that's why. My favorite characters in the Nancy Drew series are, uh, 
I really do like Bess and George, but I mean, they're never, we never see them in speedruns, really. Calling Nancy's friends are, is, is generally optional in these games. So, uh, I'm not gonna do it. Nancy's father is in this game. He's the one that you're supposed to call for hints. Uh, you can get hints from Bess and George, but they're mostly there to be fun. As opposed to, uh... Uh... How long did it take me to prepare speedrun this game? About a month. About a month. Yep. Ooh, Alibi and Ashes is a good game, too. I like that. I've got another, uh... The speedrun for, uh, I did a speedrun for Alibi and Ashes, like, years and years ago. It turns out that you can skip that one puzzle towards the end. The video puzzle that takes place inside, uh, Brenda Carlton's van. So, it's like, I can, I can beat the game faster now, simply because, um, that one puzzle's optional. Turns out it's optional. I thought it was mandatory. But yeah, no, I, I would love to do more speedruns, but uh, as you can see here, it's like, wow, I spent a month just planning this speedrun. <laughs> and I'm only doing it three times. If I was really super intense about speedrunning and getting the best time possible, I would do this at least 25 times. That's what I've done when I've done, like, my super official, uh, professional speedruns. Just do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Because I, I, you know what? I messed up on that one puzzle at Jim Archer's. I messed up on that puzzle. I could do it faster. I wasted, I don't know, five seconds? Uh, somebody's asking if I've played Siberia. I have not. I played it for like two minutes, but never, never anything past that. I haven't played Blackstone Chronicles or seen the uh, trailer for the uh, Agatha Christie Murder on the Orient Express movie. I have played the game. I was thinking about doing this uh, a speed run for the game, but actually, there's a walkthrough for the game on uh, GameBoomers.com. Uh, there's a walkthrough for this game also uh, on GameBoomers.com. That was super helpful. But the one on uh, GameBoomers.com for Murder on the Orient Express that is basically the speed run route. It, it's such a um, linear game. Such a linear game. This game is also pretty linear. Um, the only randomized puzzles are, yeah, the matching puzzle and uh, Topham's card puzzle. But I'm doing the cheat in order to uh, take the randomness out of Topham's card puzzle. So really, the only random puzzle in this game, the one that changes every time you play, is the matching puzzle. Great. I'll see you later. Okay, so I need to get minnows in the reeds here in order to catch that fish. The game expects you to open the carriage house and read the book about fishing uh, before you uh, solve this puzzle, but you can totally, totally solve this puzzle without doing that. Okay, clicking on the reeds here should get it. So I think worm in the reeds is what gives you that, that quarter. I mean, nickel. Gives you a nickel. A boot with a nickel in it. Oh man, somebody played through White Wolf of Icicle Creek with only cooking once? Oh, that's great. Interestingly enough, Nancy has three different things she says there about the fish. The game just randomly determines which of the three she's going to say. Speaking of three things, there are also three different, uh, uh, what do you call it? Roads. Roads. So the potholes on the roads are, um, not randomly determined. There are three different possible, uh, places where potholes can be. Three different setups. The game just changes it, um, I think randomly. I haven't bothered to figure out if it cycles through all three of them, because honestly, it doesn't make that much of a difference where the potholes are. I don't have to memorize their locations. Okay, now we're rushing over here and... Okay, this is gonna be another part where I'm probably gonna be quiet for a while as I solve puzzles. 
This puzzle is always the same. Means all the pieces always start off in the exact same uh, starting position. And as I said, uh, it only the game only checks to make sure that you've uh, gotten this this word, Lois. Next puzzle, okay. One, two, four. Oh, come on. Two. Eight. Two, and then seven. I just have that memorized. It's not too complicated of a puzzle. So what you're supposed to do is solve a puzzle in the mini golf area for that, but uh, you can skip it. Just just enter the solution, and the game will totally accept it. And next, I'm going to do a, a this double talk cheat. If I could let some light in here, While Nancy's talking, I save time by opening up this. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, like, I was doing something while Nancy was talking. I just did not wait those two seconds to, to hear her talk at me. So that's why it's a time saver. Okay. This puzzle is ridiculously picky. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, let's hope the game likes this. Nope, game does not, and that was the right solution. Okay, so I have to try it again. I don't know what the game's problem is with this puzzle, but it is just, it's, it's just ridiculous. Okay, so where was I? Um, okay. And then this goes here. There we go. Yep. See, I don't, I don't know what the problem was there. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, Nancy has two different lines of dialogue here. One if you've got the mirrors, if you've put the mirrors in place, and one if you haven't put the mirrors in place. Slightly faster line of dialogue if you've got the mirrors in place already. So that's why I went with uh, putting the mirrors in place rather than putting them in place after doing the dominoes. Come on, there we go. Almost perfect, kind of kind of did a little slowly there at the very end, but uh, that was almost perfect. Hey everybody, how's it going? I did do a speed run of uh, Ghost of Thornton Hall, but... Uh, I see somebody like beat my speedrun by 10 minutes, so they must have discovered some sort of skip, or I did something that was unnecessary. I don't know. So here I'm looking at these two things. Maybe I should ask Richard Topham if this crystal ever got delivered. Both of those trigger conversations at Richard Topham's, and that's sort of why I saw that silly little logic puzzle was because I needed to talk to him. Hello, Mr. Hello, Mr. Topham. Am I to assume that you have the correct solution to that logic problem? Right here. Let's have a look. Hmm. Why, you appear to have indeed found the solution. Well, since you've proved... Yeah, this game is a lot of puzzles and chores. Yes, yes, that is true. Okay, so the two notes. Uh, one of them is for Marcel. So this conversation is about Marcel. I'm, I'm going to go uh, back to Emily and get Marcel. Because that gives me a key uh, in order to open Josiah's uh, uh, safe deposit box. And inside is going to be the other half of the trivet. So I, I wanted to have the trivet half done around the uh, around R before I uh, get the other half of the trivet uh, from the uh, safe deposit box. That was one of my ideas while uh, speedrunning this game. You must be talking about that chunk of quartz that came last winter. 
I still have it right here. Why? I was wondering if I could buy it from you. For my father. Yes, my goal for this game is underneath an hour. Yeah, lots of chores in this game. Alright, I've got my solution here. So, fun fact, I've got the solution to nine of the various things. He only says, uh, there are ten different things he can say. Like, which card am I holding? What card am I thinking of? What card am I concentrating on? What card is this? What card am I looking at? Do you know what card I'm looking at? So I've got nine of the answers. I don't know the answer for uh, this is which card. So I'm just going to cross my fingers and hope I don't get that one. <laughs> yeah, I've got nine out of the ten questions I've got the answers for. Not the tenth one. Fingers crossed we never get that tenth one. But what if I can't do it? Just stay focused on the cards and my superior brain power will do the rest. Very well, let's begin. What card am I holding? This one. Marvelous. Here's another. What card am I holding? This one. Very easy when he gives Marvelous. you the same one twice in a row. What card am I concentrating on? This one. Wonderful. Here's another. Tell me, what card is this? Uh, this one. This one. Marvelous. Here's another. What card am I looking at? This one. Very good. Got it. You okay. Did. Well, actually, I did it. So yeah, this puzzle is super easy when you've got the answers already written out. Yay! Okay, so we've got that piece of quartz. I'm going to drop it off at Waddell. I don't have enough money to pay him yet, but, uh, you know, I can drop it off early, get the money later. So that's that's very good. It was nice talking to you. I knew you were going to say that. A little psychic humor. Speaking of randomized things, um, what he says at the end of conversations, he's got like a couple of things. It's like, I'm sure it was. Good day, mister. He's got a couple of things he could say. I guess it's just random it. what he says. The game just randomly yeah. determines every time you call him. So Dad automatically calls after you meet Jim Archer. Also after you meet Jim Archer, the hidden passageway in the parlor opens up. I had Dad call me here simply because I didn't have any extra money in order to call him earlier on in the game. It's faster to call him out uh, earlier on in the game. Uh, that conversation is slightly faster than this conversation. However, you've got to wait like five, five to ten seconds for the um, for the telephone operator to connect you, and that kind of eats up the time you save. So it, it's basically not not too much of a time difference to have him call you and it saves you money so that's why I have him call me remember watch your gas gauge and get gas when you're low so you don't run out and try to avoid potholes the more you hit the likely it is you'll wind up with a so yeah uh, uh, as i said yesterday i i did two uh, uh speed runs of this game both times i screwed up on the ham radio puzzle once i forgot to get the quartz thing from mr waddell uh, the other time, I forgot to get the cues. So this time, I hope not to screw up. All right, but in the meantime... I know, I know. Pick up those documents. That's my girl. Goodbye, Dad. Keep in touch. Okay, and so here I'm just going to run to Emily in order to get the key, and then I'm going to run to Jim Archer in order to uh, tell him about the key. Hi, Nancy. Would you happen to know where your mother put Josiah's favorite hat? Look in the drawer, right? Okay, and then I do the That's quartz awesome. and the, uh, the, the raffle tickets excited. at the exact same time. Thanks again, Nancy. You're welcome. You're, you're wonderful, Emily. I love you. Uh, here we go. Looks like a safe deposit box key. Emily. I hide in my bedroom all day wearing a nightgown because I'm Emily! Okay, don't screw this up. Don't screw this up, Argelfonf. I'm getting my raffle tickets. I, uh... So I split up that uh, Trivet Hunt Fetch quest. Uh, basically, Titusville Telco is close to uh, the Lilac Inn, so I split it up there. And, uh, you know, uh, Jim Archer is somewhat close to Twin Elms, so I, I try to split it up. So, hey, I go to Twin Elms when I'm close to Jim Archer, and I try to go to Titusville Telco when I'm close, at, uh, close by Lilac Inn. Makes sense, right? Go to nearby places. Hello, Mr. Waddell. Now what? Okay, Waddell, I give him the quartz. I have a long conversation with Jim Archer. I get a telegram. I deliver the trivet half, and I deliver the telegram. Okay, three more things. Like 
I said, no big deal. You're gonna have to cough up two dollars, though. You can pay me when you pick it up. Good day. Whoops. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Hello again. Did Josiah Crowley have a safe deposit box here? As a matter of fact, he did. Topham has tried to claim its contents, but he can't find the key. This is kind of a long conversation, but it it's not too bad. Thing. May I see if it opens the box? It takes two keys to open a safe deposit box. The owner's key and my key. And in this case, I'm under no obligation to open it for you. Oh, but I... However, were you to do me a... More chores? No! I need a dress so I can put it on my piggy bank. I like to dress up my piggy bank in dresses and call it my wife. I'm sorry, I'm a very lonely old man. <laughs> he looks sad and then he gets up and then he smiles at you and then he continues. Uh oh, a second conversation option is the fast one. I have it right here. The seamstress said that all the pieces have been cut out and I think that's the end of the conversation, right? When it's finished, yep, that's it. I'll let you try that key in Josiah's safe deposit box. Okay, Telegram, Twin Elms, Telegram. My best to Emily. Okay. That was, that was kind of a mistake there. You'll notice I uh, overshot the door. I obviously, I, I overshot the door and had to go back. Uh, it's obviously no faster more. to not do that. That's one of the things I talk about when, uh, you know, you. not being the fastest at clicking. Hey, cool? What you do is you right-click. That is, you hold down the right mouse button in order to spin around in a circle really quickly. It's very fancy. You mean you want me to deliver them for you? You've got a car, you're trustworthy, or at least your father thinks you are, so what do you say? I'll pay you 25 cents each time you complete a delivery. And you might even get some tips. Okay, okay Twin sure. Elms. Great, you're hired. Here, deliver this to Seymour out at Blenheim. Then I'm going to go upstairs, now check the sewing done, machine. And give you another telegram to deliver. Great, see you in a little while. I've got the notes for this game here on a piece of paper. And by a piece of paper, I mean it's on my iPad screen. I, I basically wrote, wrote wrote notes for myself in a Word document, took pictures with my iPad, and now I've got my iPad propped up right here so I can see what those pictures are. Right here. Good. And here is Josiah's trivet. I didn't realize when I asked to borrow it. Oh, scarlet hand is kind of difficult to maneuver sometimes. Definitely. Definitely. Actually, you know what? The, the place that's... I, I have the hardest time with the uh, treasure in the royal tower moving around in that game is just kind of a nightmare with me I like this dress. and so that's why my speed run i'm never going to have a world record speed run in that game because i am just awful at moving around in, in that one deliberately not taking the route through the dairy because there's probably a cow there silly cows Fortunately, the first telegram is always to the same place, so it's it's really predictable. So uh, you know, it doesn't mess up my speed run to have to go way far out of my way. Okay, so I'm gonna go upstairs, check the sewing machine, talk to Jane. Have a conversation with Jane that the game expected me to have a long, long time ago. Is this your sewing machine? Actually, that belonged to my mom. She and Jane used to So you can have this conversation about the sewing machine earlier, but you can't uh you can't you can't zoom in on it. It's probably in the box with the rest of You have to be told you need to you you need the dress in your inventory before you can uh zoom in and realize the sewing needle's gone. Otherwise, I would have checked the uh, sewing machine earlier on in the game when I was actually in Jane, uh, in, in Emily's room. Emily, all right? Someone stole her mother's jewelry. What? She was showing it to me just before the explosion. Now it's gone. Someone stole. Next, we have the pie puzzle. Around trying to put out the fire? Hypers! If you can't trust a fireman, who can you trust? 
lost. Who else knew Emily had that jewelry? When Gloria was alive, she could have told people. All about right, her. so um. Uh... What I'm doing here is I'm uh, going to do like a bunch of things at once. Basically, uh, there are like three or four things we need to do inside the uh, secret tunnel and three or four things you need to do inside Emily's room. And so I've just basically got it so I, I do them all at the same time. But first I have this chore. Wish I had pie. That would be great. I would eat pie, lots of pie right now. Okay, let's go. Okay, small pie. Large pie. Trying to sort these pies. Uh, let me see. Let's go with blueberry first. Imagine you could beat this puzzle a lot faster if you have it memorized, but I do not have that sort of free time. Oh gosh, what what did I do wrong here? There, Got it. Do it. Okay, so solving the pie puzzle lets me look at this. Looks like there might be some kind of tunnel around here. I'm saving time by uh, you know, not checking out the second half of that thing. And by doing this conversation with Jane. Here's that box. I'm sure that sewing machine needle is in there somewhere. I see it. Remember, when it comes to using it, you're on your own, kiddo. Well, I'll talk to you later. Don't take any wooden nickels. Alrighty, now I now I open up this. Like I said, I could have done this earlier. As soon as you meet Jim Archer, it opens up. But looking at that particular picture opens up this area here. So that's why I kind of put off going to the secret passageway because I couldn't reach this part of the secret passageway there. Nancy's going to talk about talking to Jane here. So this is the main reason, uh, that's a mandatory conversation. Next time you talk to Jane, we're going to have that conversation uh, about the um, about the photograph. So by, uh, by discovering the hidden passageway after uh, talking to Jane, I skip that conversation, the mandatory photograph conversation. I wonder if those tiles are supposed to make a picture. Yes, they are. Four, five, six... Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen, seventeen. Oh gosh, come on, where's eighteen? Yeah, 19, 20, 21. So the starting pieces to that puzzle are, they're always in the exact same spots. That's how I'm just able to get the uh, the, the, the correct solutions uh, just in straight like that. Or move the, pieces, move the pieces perfectly to the right spots is simply because they're always in the same starting positions. I don't have it memorized, but I've just got, I, I just made myself a diagram of, okay, you click on the pieces in this order, that's how you swap them into places. Okay, and that's the final thing I do in the Hidden Passageway, is double check that Richard Topham is there. Because I can't break into his house unless I've used the Hidden Passageway to determine that he's there. Minor misclick there, sorry about that. 
Okay, so what we're supposed to do is talk to Jane, not only about the Hidden Passageways, but uh, in that conversation she mentions that Emily is not here. So we can take a look at this. Okay, I'm also going to listen to this record here, because you have to listen to the record. You don't have to listen all the way through, thankfully, just a little bit. And of course, I, I came here to sew, and so I shall. <laughs> so I shall. It's a sewing joke! Woo! Okay, don't fail. Don't fail, Argyle Thumph. I'm doing somewhat well. I mean, nobody would hire me as a seamstress in real life, but I haven't lost this puzzle yet. Yes? Oh, Thanks, got it. Not bad at all. Okay, so now I'm going to run to Jim Archer and give it to him. Give him the dress. Open the trivet, get paid for my telegram, and pick up the quartz this time. Not going to jinx it at the end of this, 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 this. That would be awful. Did he even check the hemline, or he just assumes Nancy did it perfectly? Probably just guessed. That was just, that is not Josiah's will. It looks like some kind of journal. Would it be okay if I kept it? <laughs> yeah. If it was money or jewelry or something Yeah, it would be like nice that, if Emily did that top, herself, but, but uh, I mean, I guess Nancy has some experience with uh, sewing. I don't know. I'll be at my desk if you need me. Gonna solve the puzzle here. Okay, great. Telegram, telegram stuff, then break into topums, then we're gonna do the then we're gonna call all these people, all three of them, and that should be it. Notice I cut off Nancy by backing away there. That was good. That's why I didn't back away earlier. That's why I did all that stuff while still inside the uh, safe deposit room area. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to back away, and, uh, you know, you'd be forced to stick around some more. Okay, so that gave me exactly enough money to finish with Waddell. Hello, Mr. Waddell. Are you done making that blank? Have you got my fee? Right if you here. don't have the money, he's basically gonna say he, he's basically gonna tell you off. That's basically what happens. Uh, also, with that puzzle, you need to go to you need to go to the Lilac Inn in between trips. Otherwise, he'll say he hasn't had enough time to make the blank. So you do need to have a, a you you can't just go to him and then pick up the blank later. You need to go to him, go to Lilac Inn, and then pick up the blank. It's just how that puzzle works. And yeah, I'm going to break into Topham's house now. Now that I've looked at the Book of Cues. The game intends for you to, uh, you know, ask Richard Topham about the Shakespeare book, but it turns out you can totally skip that. Okay, there it is. As I said, there are three spots where the mouse could be located, so I kind of have to spin the room to see which one it is. Unfortunately, it was the one that was farthest away from me, but whatever. That's totally not a huge time waster, is it? So fun fact, uh, at that point in the game you can check uh, Topham's calendar. It says that he's got a meeting with Jim Archer. They're going to talk about all the money. And that makes him look suspicious. Maybe, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure we get a follow-up on it, but that's a, that's a suspicious clue, which I totally missed while I was playing the game. I didn't, 
didn't realize he, he even had a meeting with Mr. Mr. Archer. Another clue I missed is, uh, the car. The car, the one car, um, the black car with white sides, which you see at the very start of the game. And, uh, actually, if you leave the lilac in, uh, before, before the fire scene, you can see that car again. Well, turns out that Mr. Archer has a car just like that. He's got a photo of it inside his room. And so, uh, that's what makes him suspicious, because he's got a car just like, uh, the one that might belong to the culprit. Looks like Josiah was a ham radio operator. Okay, I'm gonna call 750 first. Oh, I messed that up, didn't I? Okay, whatever. Not a big deal. Don't mess up. Don't mess up anymore. Okay. And now these conversations. Long conversations. Who's Finn? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm afraid I have some bad news about... About five, five to seven minutes, I think, with these conversations. You have three people you can talk to, right? And so the first person you talk to, you have an optional slash additional conversation. Uh, with the other two people, you don't. So you save time by talking to Fizby first. Because her optional conversations are shorter than the other uh, optional conversations. So that's, that's why. But these conversations are just kind of long because you have to go through this conversation. See, I mean, Nancy has to introduce herself. Uh, they have to introduce the concept of the Shakespeare thing because it's possible you got to this point in the game without knowing anything about the Shakespeare stuff. So if I cue you with a passage, you'll respond with a line he gave you to say? Immediately. I know it by heart, you see. Here it goes. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. Yeah, Richard Topham is totally a cat person. He is a cat person. He had a bad experience with the ghost dogs of Moon Lake, and so that's why, uh, that's why, that's why he, he likes cats now. So uh, the reason why I'm getting these cues is for a puzzle on the clock, which is right to the right of me. You can put in these solutions without hearing the cues, but the game double checks to make sure you got all the cues uh, on on the final one, a glorious cue. It double checks to make sure you got all the cues. So sort of like the opposite of the, um, <laughs> you know, the carriage door puzzle where it only checks the only checks to make sure you've got the uh, the final the final one uh it actually checks to make sure you've got all four in this particular case so the, the cues are uh, the three here and then the one in that note that we uh that we saw in emily's room in emily's room yeah you can technically enter the uh, cue answers in uh you can enter them in early but the game double checks to make sure you actually got them so it doesn't matter if you enter them early doesn't do anything if I tell you the passage, will you tell me the sentence? Okay, so this is, Shall we therefore pageant C? Shall we therefore pageant C? Lord, what fools these mortals be. So I'm here with 52 minutes, 52 minutes and a half. Uh, getting close to the end of the game. I might beat this game in under an hour. Because then there will be thieves about. Leave by road when the owner is in? Because then there will be thieves about? Those were Puck's exact words. Well, hope I've been of some help. Over and out. Okay, 57. Now, 57 is the final one. I think Pyramus is the guy who talks longer than all of the others. Is anyone out there? Hello? Can anyone hear me? This is Pyramus. Who are you? My name's Nancy Drew. Does somebody named Puck usually call you on this frequency? Somebody named Puck. All right, so I got this. Uh, yeah, okay, we've got this. We've got this. I just need to solve the uh, the next, like, three puzzles, and then we're done. That's a good excuse, I guess. 
Yeah, this game is basically doing chores for people so we can solve this huge scavenger hunt that Josiah Crowley set up. So why are you talking to me? Did Josiah, I mean Puck, ever ask you to tell him something? People are talking about all the uh, uh, different culprits from various uh, Nancy Drew games. It would be, um, you know. Everybody thinks it's cool if a culprit from one game reappears in, in another game. However, it's kind of a spoiler if you play those games out of order, right? Because you'll know who the culprit is now. Right? If, if we have the culprit show up in multiple games, it's kind of a spoiler if you play the games out of order. Now, because this game takes place in the 1930s, there is no chance of the culprit from this game ever reappearing. Ever. Because it's like, what? How did they magically reappear 80 years later? Here. You're going to love this. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. A barking dog would do well to hold his tongue in a dangerous neighborhood. I told you it was stupid. I really appreciate your help. Hmm, what is my favorite culprit? I really liked uh, Secret of Shadow Ranch. That culprit reveal is really good. I liked it. I totally I totally went with it, but uh, Scarlet Hand. I really like that culprit, too. I just like the scene of the, the culprit yelling because Nancy Drew defeated them. That was funny. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. There are multiple solutions to this puzzle. For example, you could do two and three in place of five that's another solution but uh, I don't know which which solution is fastest that's just one I've got and it works a golf ball no doubt meant to be used on that golf course of Josiah's alrighty run to the golf course do not mess up this golf shot Michael do not mess it up oh, a miniature golf course well. got it okay hole in one Get ready to pick up the key and then go to Jim Archer. Another safe deposit box key? Alrighty, good job. Okay. Uh, there's a conversation here. We get thrown into a conversation. Uh, no way to skip it, but I'm just going to end the conversation and ignore it. Ignore this completely! You've got to go talk to Emily. She's in a bad way. What do you mean? What's happened? Please, go talk to her. She won't listen to me. No help at all. I really like the culprit from Alibi and Ashes, but then again, I've read the book, uh, books. Most of those... Okay, well, just, uh, well... <clears throat> Some of the characters in Alibi and Ashes, I'm not going to spoil the culprit's identity, but I've read, read, uh, you know, multiple books with the... Uh, uh, bruh. There are characters in Alibi and Ashes who appear in multiple books, and um, the one character who uh, is a culprit, I've read multiple books with that with the, with that culprit character, and so I really liked seeing them be 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 the culprit because I was familiar with the character having read the books. I have done a speedrun of Tomb of the Lost Queen. Uh, it's sort of like uh, what's that? Why does that sound familiar? I know why. It, it's sort of like Ghost of Thornton Hall in that, you know, it's a speedrun I did like five or six years ago, and people have figured out a faster way to beat the game, a way faster way to beat the game, and it's like, oh, I should probably, probably, uh, go back and, and, and figure out the new, faster way to play the game before we, uh, before I tried speedrunning it again. Guys, it is 58 minutes now, so um, I could beat this in under an hour. The clock officially stops uh, when the ending letter plays, so this would require me not to mess up on this ending challenge, right? I'm kind of in a hurry. You're not going anywhere until you tell me who you really are. 
What are you talking about? I just saw a picture. I like of how uh, uh, you know we had this conversation Jane about. Uh, it's been swell knowing you, sister. Oh gosh! Uh, wow, I'm totally forgetting now. Anyway, Josiah was uh, Josiah was dressing as a woman and flirting with Mr. Archer, and uh, I I totally skipped those optional conversations about that woman, and so it just kind of comes out of nowhere when Jim Archer's like, "Oh hey, this key belongs to Clara Pickford. Who is Clara Pickford?" The game totally totally assumes that you you know who she is. So this is always the same every single time. That is, she takes the same pathway every single time. So just memorize her route, and that's how you do it. And there! Done! Okay. Guys, I think this is it. This is... I've got my stopwatch ready. Why couldn't you just mind your own business? She's gonna, she's gonna shake her head, and done! 59 minutes and 35 seconds. We beat the game in under an hour, everyone. We did it! Woo! And I say we because you guys had encouraging uh, uh, comments. So, thanks a lot. Thanks for helping me. Oh man, that was really close. We, we did it! We, we, we beat the game in under an hour! My, I, I got the under an hour speed run. Why didn't Nancy throw a pie at the culprit? I don't know. So, question, who is the culprit in this game? Because Richard Topham obviously is a culprit. He made a fake will and said he got the money. But obviously Marion is a culprit too. Marion's, that's that's Jane's real name. Because she impersonated uh, Jane and, and did a bunch of evil sabotage. So it's really like there are two different culprits in this game, right? I don't know. I, I I feel like there are two culprits in this game. I feel like that's that's probably the most accurate way of describing this game. And we got some pie, and of course, because I am the most awesome speedrunner. Okay, I'm not the most awesome speedrunner ever, but because I played this game really really quickly in under an hour, I get I get Puzzle Pro for solving puzzles at lightning speed. How did crashing into the car make a huge wall of pies around her? I don't know. Oh, that false redhead. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if that's her real hair color or if she dyed it to look more like the real Jane. I don't know. In any case... Yeah, no, I'm not going to play another game. That, that's it. That's, that is it for tonight. I'm going to go and get some... Uh, I'm going to get some pie. <laughs> I want to get some pie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my uh, speed run. Have fun. Uh, you know. Stay sleuthy, everybody. Stay sleuthy.